Dr. Deborah Davis is a PhD, uh, a noted toxicologist, expert on cancer, uh, and the author of a new book called Disconnect. Deborah, welcome to TechCrunch TV. Well, thank you very much for having me. So, Deborah, before we begin, or perhaps I should call you Dr. Davis, before we begin an analysis of your book, tell our audience about your um, professional qualifications, because I think your message which is quite controversial, needs to be understood in the context of your experience as a, a doctor and researcher. I worked at the National Academy of Sciences for 10 years as the founding director of the Board on Environmental Studies and Toxicology. And in that capacity, I oversaw the production of reports on passive smoke and asbestos, for example. And when I first heard that cell phones could be a problem, I thought the people saying that were out of their minds. I owned three phones at the time. But then I began to look at the evidence, and I found that the governments of Britain and uh, Israel had already taken steps to issue warnings, and I thought maybe they were a little eccentric. The long, more I looked in it, the more I found things like this big fat book that literally weighs well over a pound. I noticed that there really is a lot of information. First of all, cell phone radiation is too weak to damage DNA like x-rays, I realized, as did most scientists, therefore I thought it was safe. But even though it's too weak to damage like x-rays, it does cause damage. There are effects from the pulsed nature of the signal having nothing to do with the power of the signal. And right out of the bat, I realized that cell phones are two-way microwave radios. And I thought, what on earth is going on? The real turning point for me came when I saw my eight-month-old grandson be able to do little things with the phone. And I thought, what a clever child. And then I began to look at what that microwave radiation coming from the phone could do over the long haul. Now I realize nobody's going to die from holding a cell phone up to their head for, for a while. It's the long-term effect. It's the cumulative integrated dose under the curve, so to speak. We have to be concerned about, and it's not the power of the phone. It's the pulsed nature of the signal that may disturb resonance in all of our cells. So, Deborah, you, you've written a book called Disconnect the truth about cell phone radiation and what the industry is doing to hide it and how to protect your family. So a couple of minutes on the truth about cell phone radiation. Well, For an audience that's probably 100% um, owning at least one, probably two or three cell phones. Well, as I say, I own three phones myself when I started out on this. I still own two and I use it all the time. It's very simple. You just need to practice safe phone. Distance is your friend. For every millimeter, for every millimeter away from the brain or body you hold a phone, it's 15% less radiation that's getting into you. All phones work with symmetrical antennas. So the antenna, whether on this iPhone here, is radiating in a symmetrical way, not directional. Half of the radiation from a phone, according to studies done by industry, will get into your brain or body. That is why phones are actually only tested in two positions with a spacer of six to four millimeters against the ear and with a holster on the hip. Phones are actually never tested in the way most of us use them. They're never tested in the pocket of the shirt or the pants. If they were, they emit four to seven times more radiation. And the information I'm giving you is not coming from some left-wing group. It's coming from industry modeling studies done by distinguished researchers in Switzerland, in France, and formerly by Professor Gandhi at the University of Utah, who worked for Motorola for more than 30 years. He stopped working for Motorola when he produced this study showing that cell phone radiation gets more into the brain of a child than it does into the brain of an adult, almost double. When that work was published in 1996, he lost all of his funding for industry. I think one of the, the most controversial parts of a, of a very controversial book is your argument that the industry, the cell phone industry, is actively hiding what you say is the truth about cell phone radiation. What exactly is the industry doing? Well, you know, they're not really hiding it. Here's what they're doing. If you go to the fine print warnings uh, that you find with the iPhone, for example, in tiny print it says, if you keep it in your pocket, you can exceed the FCC exposure guidelines. If you go to the fine print warning for the BlackBerry, it says hold it 0.98 inches from the body. And it also adds avoid keeping it near the abdomen of pregnant women or teenagers 
That's there. It's not really hidden. It's in six-point type. The reason the city of San Francisco and the city of Berkeley have recently moved to require public information about this is because most of us have no idea that these warnings exist at all. And it's kind of a, you have the information there in the fine print, nobody reads it. Is so it what, the equivalent to smoking? No, it's not, and I'll tell you why. Cell phones have changed the world in a lot of positive ways. They've radically improved our ability to respond to emergencies. They keep us connected, whether we want to be or not. And they have a lot of positive functions. Tobacco did not have a positive function, except to make tobacco farmers and rich, and for a while to drive the economies of Britain and the United States, because the revenues from tobacco were so great. Cell phones have positive roles. So the, the, where there is a parallel, however, is in the effect, the effect of the industry to try to keep this information under wraps. Well, also my point was in, in terms of comparing it to the tobacco industry is that there was a, a, a period in history where most people denied, either conveniently or otherwise, that smoking was bad for your health and gave you cancer. Will there be a point, do you think, in the future, in the next 10, 15, 20 years, where phones come with more active warnings on them in the way that cigarettes come? Hello, this is the 21st century and we're there now. I'll tell you what's really going on. The United States of America is clueless about what's happening in tech-savvy countries like Finland and Israel and frankly France. The Israeli government has posted on their website warnings about safe use of cell phones. And this is not to be taken lightly because as you know, Israel is a country that lives and dies by radar. And if Israel is issuing warnings about safe use of cell phones, I think it's a wake-up call for the rest of us. So you're, you're saying that the Americans, like in so many other areas, are lagging behind here? Absolutely. Health Canada, even, has just updated their website. What do you mean, even, for Canadians out there? The Canadians are usually pretty smart on these things. They, they are pretty smart, but they were lagging as well. But recently, much to their credit, the Canadians have done the right thing, and they have posted on their website simple information about the ways you can protect your family. And this is what you can find on our website. Distance is your friend. We want people to learn how to practice safe phone. Well, before we get to the, the details of how to protect your family, if the people who really care about this and are outraged by the lack of government activity, what can they do? Well, I think it's happening now. That's what's happening in the city of Berkeley. It's happening in San Francisco. People are coming together. And by the way, I think this problem is far too big for the government. This is a problem where the private sector is already stepping up to the plate. Certainly Siemens in, uh, has taken action by making phones that are lower powered and turn themselves off automatically. Steve Jobs apparently didn't want to have an off switch on an iPhone because it would be death. Ironically, isn't it? All you need is an off switch so that we can turn them on and off whenever we want to do so. That would be a great way of reducing your exposure. Should one, though, put pressure on the, the manufacturers of cell phones, the distributors, the ISPs? Who are the, where is the, the most sensitive area, do you think, where you know, firms or distributors of phones or owners of the network are responsible? I, I believe in the marketplace in a very, very fundamental way, and I think we need girl cots here. I think if women understand that their children are at risk and they choose to buy safer phones, the industry is going to have to make safer phones. You're absolutely right. We need to start with the industry f making safer phones. They already know how to do that, and they're already doing it. There's a catch, though. The attorneys working for the companies don't want them to admit they can make safer phones because then they're going to be liable, as they should be, for the fact that they've been irresponsible in the past. That's, that's a, a very challenging thing from a business model point of view. But I've talked to people in industry who are reaching out to me now, and they say, look, we know we, we need to do better. And in fact, just last week, the industry and the city of San Francisco agreed that there should be general information provided to the public to reduce children's use of cell phones, to use distance, and basically to practice safe phone. You may have come on the wrong channel, Deborah. I don't think uh, we have any women watching, but maybe there are a few out there. You'd be surprised, actually. A lot of war, a lot of war gamers are women, too. Finally. Some of your fanboys are fangirls. Right. Well, for the fanboys and fangirls out there, uh, Dr. Deborah Davis, finally, in a minute, how should one protect one's family? Well, the simplest things, you use a headset. Any headset works. Bluetooth is fine. Just don't keep the phone on and on your body at all times. Don't sleep with the phone. If you have to use it as an alarm clock, 
keep it a foot away from, your, from you. Don't hold the phone directly against your head unless it's an emergency. Interesting, in, when the signal is weak, you can get a thousand times more exposure from your phone. If you have two bars or less, it will be, of course, running out of battery faster because it's using more energy to reach that tower. That's when you want to be very careful and not use a phone when the signal is weak, close to your body. The other thing is, generally keep it away from children. For goodness sakes, don't use a phone as a pacifier. Don't play white noise apps and put them under the baby's head to get them to go to sleep. These are not good ideas. That is why in France and Israel, they're, they're really moving to ban the use of cell phones for children. I just came back from Turkey, where my book has sold out. The Turkish government is banning the advertisement of cell phones to children. They're banning it in Turkey. And the Israelis are also discouraging it. The French passed a law with the same impact. We've got to get on board here with the rest of the world and understand cell phones are not going to go away. We've got to make them safer understand that it's really important to figure out how to practice safe phone. We, pr we protect our brains when we're skiing or biking or skateboarding. We've got to protect our brains when we're using phones as well. And when we do that, we're all going to be better off because whatever damage might have occurred to anybody from using cell phones in the past, our DNA repairs itself. That's the good part of it. So whatever you may have done in the past, it doesn't matter. All you have to do now is use little common sense. Practice safe phone. Hold the phone right here. We're not talking about throwing it halfway across the room. Well, Deborah, uh, Deborah Davis, Dr. Deborah Davis, there you have it. Um, don't sleep with your phone. Practice safe phone. Yes. The author of Disconnect, thank you so much for appearing on TechCrunch TV. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to being back.